The Mondeo has become a bit of a cult car in the UK. It even had a Prime Minister, one Tony Blair, saying that the vote of Mondeo Man was crucial to winning an election. But things change in the world of motoring as well as the world of politics. Mr Blair is now peddling his uh, autobiography and we've got the new Mondeo here. If your memory can stretch back to 1995, you'll realise that this version and the original bear nothing in common. They look as if they come from another planet. In fact, you have to look rather closely to see the very subtle but considerable changes in this car from the 2003 version. The Mondeo has been a big success for Ford. Since this one was launched in 2003, they've sold 1.3 million of them. And although sales in the big family car sector have gone down, the Mondeo sales have held up remarkably well. The problem for the new Mondeo is this. It is actually now an outstanding car. I've been driving it for the last four hours. And if it had a German badge on the front of that grill, you could put 10,000 pounds on the price quite easily. Because when it comes to, does it drive as well as the German premium brands? Yes, it does, and probably better. Does it look as good as the German premium brands? Well, if you get rid of the snob value, I think it does as well. Is it more practical and got more room? Yes, it does. The problem is, does it have the image? Sadly, the answer for Ford is probably still no, even if it deserves to have the image, because the car is certainly good enough. The Mondeo has earned itself a very good reputation for the way it drives. It's happily accepted as the best driving car in the large family car sector. Where Ford have aimed to improve things now is with the technology under the bonnet. We've got uh, the new two-litre Ecotec petrol engine, which cuts emissions. They've worked a great deal as well on the refinement on the interior of the car. So whether you're in the front or the back, the sound level is very, very reduced. This is a car you could travel long distances in. We've done over 200 miles today, and I don't feel as if I've done any distance at all. So the new engines are refined. They're perfect for long distance cruising, which is what Mondeo Man does a great deal of the time up and down British motorways. But get yourself on a twisty, bendy road, and this car will surprise you on just how nimble and agile it is. It does not feel the big car that it clearly is. I have to admit, I don't really know who this fictitious Mondeo Man is. I'm not sure that Ford do. What I do know is that any buyer of this new Mondeo is going to be somebody getting a very, very good car. This new Mondeo is responsive. It's fun to drive, but also it can switch. If you're stuck in city traffic with this new auto gearbox, it's also very relaxing to drive. It is the complete package. And the best news is that Ford very wisely in these very competitive times have decided to keep the price as it was for the Mondeo, despite all of the changes. There's actually over 1,300 different part changes. Prices start at 17,295 and go up to just over 22,000 pounds. That's seriously good value for a car that offers genuine executive motoring. To sum up, Ford really couldn't have done a great deal more with this car. It truly is a very, very good car. It's literally only that badge that doesn't mean it's costing you £30,000. But you know what? That really is great news for you out there, the consumers, because you're getting yourself a premium car here, but not at a premium price.